It is finally here, season two, the day we've all been waiting for. And today we're going to go over the patch notes for season two. As you know, we have covered everything new that comes with the game previously, but there's going to be changes that I didn't catch when we were beta testing or rather playtesting a few days ago. Uh, and there were also changes that weren't in the playtesting build that I wasn't, you know, we obviously wouldn't know because they didn't put it in. So today we're going to go over the patch notes. We're going to talk about everything that's changing in the game in Season 2. And this patch is huge. And, you know, I, I already was really bullish on the finals as a game. And it's really cool to see that, <laughs> that I, I'm being right. I was right. Anyways, let's take a look and dive into it. There's Sys Horizon, the new map. It's really cool. You got Power Shift. The 5v5 game mode, I have explained it more in detail, so we won't go too much in detail on it here. If you guys want to check that video out later, it is on my channel. Um, as I mentioned before, there is a new tutorial. Let me zoom in here a little bit. There we go. Uh, there's a new tutorial on Monaco that helps people learn a little bit. We got the new weapons. We got the FAMAS, the 93R, and the KS-23. The FAMAS is a burst uh, assault rifle. The 93R is a burst handgun. And the KS-23 is a slug shotgun. Is a slug shotgun. It's uh, very difficult, like from using it. The FAMAS is okay, not super good. 93R could have potential, and I don't really like burst weapons that much, so I'm not entirely sure how viable it will be. Personally, I might not use it. And the KS23 is, uh, you know, it's a projectile shotgun, it's a projectile weapon. I don't think it's very consistent because of that reason, but it's cool to see a slug shotgun. Uh, in the midst. Hopefully we're going to see a nerf to the SA-1216, otherwise there's no point in running any other weapon. Uh, we have the new gadgets, there's a lot of them. <laughs> we got the dematerializer, as you can see it makes a hole in a wall, you can make a hole and you can plug that hole uh, using one charge each. Enemies can also plug that hole uh, that you make uh, as well. This is a medium specialization. You have the gateway, it's a portal for light, it lets you teleport from point A to B, goes 70 meters, it should retain momentum, um, you can throw items through it, the vault, barrels, grenades, RPGs, etc. Um, stays up for quite a while, I don't think you can remove it in any way, you can also put it on the cash out, and it will people will take the portal instead of actually taking the cash out, which is really annoying. But it's there. Also, I'm sorry if my voice is weird. Ooh. I'm sorry if my voice is, is weird. I woke up early for this. I was up really late yesterday because I was really hyped. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> I feel like a kid on Christmas. Anti-gravity cube, a deployable cube that the heavy cube build can ma make gravity, manipulate gravity. It's a little bit like the horizon lift. Uh, makes everything inside of it slowly float upwards. It keeps the momentum of whatever you are. Whatever direction you're going, kind of. So like you're jumping upwards, you'll go like that's the same line upwards. If you come from the side, you will keep going the same side. Um, you can't go downwards. That's basically it. Uh, it picks up the cash out as well, of course, and it will also you can steal when you're inside of it. Um, you can also shoot the little cube. It has like no health at all. So it's I don't think it's that viable, but it's really cool at least. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, data reshaper allows you to turn one thing into another. Uh, in this case, this will make the it will make uh, anything any enemy gadget as you can see in the clip. Uh, it will turn it into something else, something safe, a flower pod or a prop, as I call them. Uh, if you use the data reshaper on a barrel, the barrel will always turn into another type of barrel. It will always turn into the same type of barrel. As you can see in the clip, there was like red barrel to gas. Uh, sorry, no, it was like gas to red, and then I believe it's like red to gas, and then goo to. I don't remember the exact order. Uh, <laughs> I haven't experimented with enough. We're gonna know it more for future videos. Uh, we have the new battle pass. Skins look great. They added uh, become a professional. This is not pro play, uh, but it's basically a way to get free rewards. I didn't mention it in my previous video because I didn't think it was that important, but it's probably worth mentioning. This is a great way to get free skins. Is a there's a bunch of challenges that they will unlock throughout the game that will give you free skins or whatever, which is really cool. It's really awesome to get free stuff. We all love free stuff, don't we? Uh, moving on, we got better matches. They're saying they're doing better matchmaking when playing in the ranked tournaments. You'll get your starting rank based on your first eight rounds from there. You'll move up and down from your performance contestants and can expect to land between bronze and gold at first and climb the ranks from there. Uh, in addition to that, we also know that ranked, as a, it is being revamped, uh, apparently it's going to have something like a hidden elo. You will not be able to see your elo, hence it being hidden. And it will it's, a, it's like fame points. 
uh, or whatever, your, it, it is your fame points, and that's your elo. Uh, this is what the way it was explained to me. And uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be better than the previous one, at least. It's going to be worth playing. So when we do stream this game, Solo to Diamond, it's going to be... Hopefully, we're going to get better teammates. And, and we can see how it goes. Private matches are being added. They've covered it. Uh, private matches are also coming. They covered it in a previous video. Uh, there, you can have six players. And uh, but let's dive into the actual details instead. The patch uh, changes. The details. All right. New map. All right. This is this is the format I'm more used to. That makes more sense. Added the standard issue of the new Sys Horizon map. Out of the Retro Invention 82 map, I do not know what the Retro Invention 82 event is, that's gonna be cool. Dematerializer, Gateway, Data Reshaper, Gravity Cube, Guns, very nervous. Okay, here we go. So I already covered some of these things in my video because we tried everything out. But here we have it, the details, black on white. Nukes. Added diminishing returns on damage from nukes, throwable objects that carry C4s, boot chargers, or mines for each source of explosive damage, including the throwable and starting with the highest a damage modifier applied to each instance in the sequence. Okay, that's really cool. So if you have a so okay, so if you have the, the more if you have like let's say a 6 C4s, they're gonna deal what did they deal 150 damage. The first one will deal 150 damage. The second one will deal 80. Next one will deal. 60. I'm not good with math. I'm a gamer, not a mapper. Gas canisters now immediately start to steer off the direct trajectory, aka wobble, but they have attachments. When picking up throwable objects, that's the red ones. They just go all over the place. Uh, when picking up throwable objects with explosive gadgets attached, nukes and nukes, said explosives will come unarmed. When a player lets go of the carried object, a rearming timer for the explosive starts. That, I believe, is the same as a normal prime timer. We showed it in my previous video. The explosions from C4 bridge charges on all mines that detonate while well unprimed now deal 20% of their original damage. Oh, that is a huge nerf. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a bit of a shame, I'm not gonna lie. Because that's not just for stuck C4 and bridge charges, that's in general. Uh, decrease the health value of propane gas tanks from 250 to 120. Fix the bug with fuel barrels where sometimes when an ignite would take damage, for example, from explosions. Or bullets. I'm not sponsored, but I'm really tired. Well, oof! Just so putting something on my drinks. Some duct tape. Toxic gas added a delay to the application of damage. Damage will now start to take 0.5 seconds after the players enter the gas cloud. I know some of you guys complained about this specifically. Added new functionality that causes damage to ramp up gradually over time from 30 HP per seconds to 60 HP per seconds over two seconds. Very big difference. You can really feel it. Uh, definitely a good change. Um, makes healing through the gas not as viable. It makes it a little bit more dangerous. I'm not sure how much heavy can survive inside of it, but it's definitely going to be a, you know, you have to be careful with it. That's for sure. All right, let's continue. There's so much more. There's so much more. We're not even done yet. Gadgets, C4. Decreased ammo count from 2 to 1. Decreased cooldown from 45 to 30 seconds. Decreased minimum damage at the edge of the explosion from 93 to 75. So basically, uh, it it basically turned into the breach charge for heavy with a lot less damage. And we had all the changes before with the, C4, uh, with the nukes. Uh, it's basically what less damage, but a larger blast radius and more explosive damage to the breach charge. D this might put the C4 into the ground, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm not going to lie. The same goes for the defibrillator, a functionality that revives, they, they added a functionality that causes revived players to gradually rematerialize into the level over a period of 3 seconds before fully loading back into arena. AKA, it does not instantly revive anymore, instead, they will, it's like a hands-free revive, it's a little bit faster than a normal revive, where they will slowly build up, and it's very visible, anyone can see them. And starting health increased to 50%, which is, I guess, good. Increased charge up time from 0.6 seconds to 0.8 seconds, which is also good. You can actually feel it. It feels really clunky now in comparison, but we'll get used to it. Dome shield. Decreased maximum duration from 20 seconds to 12. Jump pad increased duration. Uh, jump pad increased cooldown from 25 to 30. Motion sensor. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a lot of this. Moved from the light archetype to the heavy. 
Then, oh, I knew it. Okay, RPG is also seeing some nerfs. Fix an issue that made dispersion almost identical, regardless of what state the player was in. Oh, that was an issue. Okay. <laughs> Increase projectile dispersion on all non-aiming states. Reduce projectile dispersion when aimed out sights. Increase zo So basically, the RPG will go all over the place. Uh, it's more likely when you hit fire. Uh, when you aim down sights, it's going to be a lot more accurate, which we did notice when we were testing it the other day. Uh, the zoom-in time, equip time, and uh, unequip time have all been made slower, so it feels more clunky, which was the word I used in my Everything New video. Sonar grenade, move from medium to light. Tracky dart, move from medium to light. Decrease dispersion in most movement saves by 50%. Added accuracy by decreasing dark dispersion while aiming down sights. Oh, that's great. I can't believe it's still dispersion on that. That's crazy, though. Added force feedback for controllers, finally. So that basically means that medium has, um, I'm, I'm gonna spoil it, it doesn't have any more uh, scan. There are no more scan abilities for medium in the finals. It is all to heavy and light, which is great. I love it. Makes uh, everything that makes medium less viable. They hit medium really hard this patch, but I think it was necessary. Uh, vanishing Bomb increased grease period for teammates from 0.75 to 125. Increased total cloak duration on teammates from 6 to 7.5 seconds. Increased total cloak duration on the user from 5 seconds to 6. More light buffs. So overall I'm saying what they're doing in this patch is they're lowering the value with the strength of medium and heavy, but also bringing light up a little bit. So they're trying to get make every class viable. And we're just going to have to see whether that will happen or not. They're definitely changing up, up a little bit. They're adding abilities that kind of like make light more viable as a teammate. Uh, they're adding destruction or more of a selfish abilities to medium. And heavy is just getting the axe, which is perfect. <laughs> Reconsensus. Removed for assessment. They're going to remake it. Mesh shield. Increased cooldown on full depleted shield from 12 to 15 seconds. Increased starting health after full depletion from 200 to 250. Good to know. I needed this for our video we're working on. <laughs> this is perfect. I love when they <laughs> just reveal this stuff for me here, so I don't have to find it myself. Okay, weapon changes. I know some of them felt different. I don't see anything about the shotgun. Oh no. Embark, why have you not touched the auto shoddy? Whatever. Let's talk about the ones that I did touch. AKM. Increased damage fall of minimum range from 35 to 30. In decreased damage followed max range from 40 to 35. Uh, decreased damage followed modifier max range from 67 to 55. AKM nerf. FCAR decreased damage fall of modifier max range to 67 to 55. Also nerf, I believe, if I read this correctly. Update weapon recoil pattern to be slightly less accurate over time during sustained firing. We mentioned that in the Everything New video. M11, increased accuracy by decreasing the bullet dispersion when firing from the hips. So it's even better hip firing. I actually tested this and I wasn't sure whether it was a... I thought that was just how it works. M60, updated recoil pattern to be slightly more accurate over time sustaining fire. Increased accuracy by decreasing bullet dispersion and hip firing. Increased accuracy by, by decreasing bullet dispersion while moving when firing when aiming down sights. Decreased accuracy slightly by increasing bullet dispersion while standing still when firing while aiming down sights. They want you to play like Rambo with it. Increased damage fall off modifier at max range from 33 to 45, so it's better over range to sh uh, the revolver. Projectile speed for throwing knives increased, so it's more easy to hit, they're faster. Decreased accuracy by increasing bullet dispersion when firing from the hip in most movement states for the XP 54. We, okay, we noticed something with the XP 54. I'm gonna. We'll see if they mention this. They might. This might be an undocumented change. Um. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it once this is done. I'll post it on my Twitter. We'll see you soon. Add a new levels with rewards to the follow following equipment items. Doesn't matter. Added option to auto sprint to the gameplay section. The preview arc for grenades now shows where they will detonate in their trajectory. Plus, they're actually accurate. And. Improved an issue with control players would unintentionally drop carried objects from trying to interact. Now carried objects won't be dropped when pressing the interact and equip button if the weapon is already equipped. Good for you control players. All right, bug fixes. These are going to be in huge to read about, so let's check it out. Well, I'm just going to read the ones that are important. Fix an issue where the scoreboard would not show the potential score for transfers in progress. Pretty huge. 
fixed dome and mesh shield not blocking projectiles and explosions correctly. Fixed initiative allowed players to steal objectives through floors and walls. That's a shame, but I liked it. And it's good that you do. Uh, do, do, do. Fix an issue where explosive objects are touched to another, another object would fall off if the primary object was destroyed. The explosive object will now also take appropriate damage in this situation. Okay, that's cool. That's actually gonna be huge. The fix an issue where melee swings could damage occluded structures, like destroying the outside walls from inside an elevator. Uh, animation doesn't matter too much. Improve spawn selection around active objectives. Let's hope that's for the better. They're just saying it is. Uh, levels, improve lighting, nighttime, Monaco. Okay, that doesn't matter too much. Art. Perfect. Audio, voice. Add a voice that's for recording. Improved footsteps. Audio for players using pistols. That's specific. And then there's some UI. Player cards added, added the final spinner to people the black screen when loading, added new item. Uh, okay, nothing important there. So that was season two, but we're gonna check out the other thing I wanted to mention as well. We're gonna have to test this some more. I could be wrong, as you guys know, we have, there's been a bunch talking about the crosshair, uh, on screen crosshairs, third party crosshairs lately. Uh, and I tested this out recently in season two. Uh, in, in the beta test, and I noticed that for whatever reason, the bullets, you guys can tell me what you guys think, because I am I could be wrong here, right? I'm not saying this in a video yet. I mean, technically I am. But I'm not saying this in a video, like, this is this is the truth, this was happening. But I noticed that the bullets, at least for the MP5, and for a lot of other uh, weapons, like the visual recoil is different, it almost feels like the bullets actually go where your, your gun is pointing, rather than middle of the screen. Take a look. So here's season two. I know that it's a bit short, but you should, you should be able to tell. Uh, the angle is slightly different, the quality is a little bit worse, I'm sorry about that. Um, but you can tell that in season two, it seems to jump about the same amount, but you can see that this the, the blue dot is in the center of the screen, you can see how the side is jumping around, and, and the bullets are not going in the center of the screen. But you're also seeing that it doesn't go one to one, so maybe they added random bloom to the MP5. I'm not entirely sure. They also added, uh, and when you look at season one, it, it just hits in the center of the screen, basically. It, it follows it a lot more here, not fully, than it does here. Here, it basically just seems to follow the, the blue dot I've had of it with some bloom. Um, but we're going to have to test that out. But that was it for season two. I'm gonna hop on and go live once this video is up. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys on the live stream. Uh, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Peace out.